It's time for Inside the Patch with your Las Vegas Raiders. Here's Gnarly Charlie. Welcome to Inside the Patch. Uh, we are ESPN Fresno. I want to thank our big sponsor. Of course, we got Fresno Rack and Shelving. Nice rack. And this week, of course, we have always Mitch Adams, the professor of the perfect rotation basketball training device. There it is. Make your kids get in the pros with the professor. And professor, uh, uh, who I love to say worked as, as sold at Oakland Coliseum, he was uh, stealing popcorn and peanuts in the stand, all the way to the Legend Show. What do you got for us this week? Well, I found this little guy hanging around, <laughs> and uh, I, I asked him if he wouldn't mind joining us. And um, it's none other than your friend of mine, Big Lincoln Kennedy. Oh. Mitch, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good to see oh, you. Oh, man. it's It's been far too long, Lincoln. The last time I saw you... I mean, in person, I see you all the time. <laughs> uh, in New York, and you actually gave me uh, not this one, but you gave there me you a go. cigar to smoke. Oh, there you and, go. Uh, there you go. There you go. And, you know, I, I, you know, you're such a cigar aficionado that uh, <laughs> I thought you might be smoking one on air today with us. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't smoke. I don't smoke in the house. I, I do love to smoke, smoke cigar smoke, but I don't do it in the house. So I'm in my office right now. Gnarly Charlie's going to be with you as well. Uh, it'd be missed if I didn't mention you. So it's going to be here with you guys. Well, Lincoln, I mean, I was a season ticket holder for 12 years in Oakland. And, mm-hmm. and of course, I've seen you play. I've, I've watched you talk on the chalkboard. I know, I, I feel like I know you, you know, you know, it's, <laughs> it's our first time. But, but one of the things I do want to get out there right away is you're a very large man. You're a big, and, and, and you got to play in, in the NFL for a long time. And, and I, I bring that because how, how do you, because when you fall, you fall a lot farther than most people. You know, it, you have to really take care of your body. And, and it seems like the NFL is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, I tell you what, Charlie, back in my day, what I tried to do is I tried to fall on other people. <laughs> I didn't want to fall on the ground. So I had this I had this move. I called it the avalanche. And what I would do is I would snatch a guy to the ground or push him down to the ground. And then I would fall. on. that's how I got my rest in between plays, um, especially pass plays. If I wasn't running down the field trying to pick up players. But, yeah. I, I made it a habit to to not want to touch the ground. And I played in various stadiums where I refused to go down. You know, oh, like the old Three <laughs> Rivers, the old Veterans Stadium. I mean, I refused. That that ground was hard as hell. Hell, I'm even old enough to remember I played in the Astrodome, and that turf was poor. Whoa. Was really poor as well. So, yeah, I, yeah, I tried not to go down in certain, certain uh, places. And if I did have to go down, I wanted to make sure somebody was under me to help catch the fall. <laughs> That is it, great. That makes hey, Lincoln, perfect sense. I, I, I was afraid of that avalanche um, the, first, <laughs> the first time I met you. Do you remember what that was? Do you remember the I circumstances? I don't recall. I don't recall, Mitch. Oh, you have I'm, to remind me. I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> you had just retired, and <laughs> Morris Bradshaw came to me and said, hey, I think we can get Lincoln Kennedy to do the Legend Show. I'm like, great. <laughs> and someone, it was a hot day in Oakland. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, hot. <laughs> and you had a towel with you and mm-hmm. you came into the East club and you yelled my name out first and last name. <laughs> and I look over and it's almost as if a shadow came over me and I'm like, Oh my God, he's it's mad. Eclipse. An eclipse. Yeah. Solar eclipse. It just happened. Yeah. It happened yeah. again. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> <laughs> and, Many years later. <laughs> and you like, why did you send me to the West club? And I mean, uh-huh. I was like standing there like, this is my first time meeting this guy. <laughs> And I'm like, I put both hands up like, hey, man, someone else sent you there. Uh, <laughs> and from that day forward, we've been good. But I was scared Certainly. to I was scared to death. that You were well, cause I, you you were sweating, man. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I did that a lot back in the day. So, I, yeah, yeah, I had to, had to try to find a way to keep cool. I didn't like to walk around that stadium any more than I had to. Anyways. <laughs> what, yeah. about, what about Al Davis? What about some conversation you've had with him? Because he seemed like one of those guys that would come up to you and just enlighten you with stuff, you know? Well, first of all, you know, may he rest in peace. He, he really revitalized my career, you know, and really, really made me feel worthy. He was part of the family, the Raider family. One of the reasons why I'm still to this day tied to the organization, um, I have that, that that profound affinity towards it. You know, Al, I, the best way to describe Al Mercedes Davis is, is, you know, you ever may meet one of those grandparents that could tell you stories for days yeah, and yeah. never repeat them? That was Al Davis. He had more stories. He had more stories about the history, his affiliation with the NFL, 
him being an owner, all the stuff that when you would just sit there and I would just sit in his office at times and just be like, whoa, wow. Oh my gosh. Like, like, like a kid <laughs> looking in a candy store. And then that's what, that's what Al did for me really. And, and what I appreciated most is Al had a respect for his players. If you played well, he was going to, he was going to acknowledge that he was going to take care of you because he always took care of his players. And more importantly, you know, I used to come down to the locker room and say, hey, you know, we need a defensive end. Free agency's coming up. What do you think about this guy? What do you think about that guy? Oh, yeah. I respected that. I, repre- I appreciated the hell out of that because, you know, I had not – I only it, you played for two two clubs. That was the Falcons and the Raiders. And the first time I was at the Falcons, it wasn't with Arthur Blank, who's the current owner of the Falcons. It was a little different ownership. So I only had experience with two NFL owners. So – for me, it was about being a part of something bigger than just going out there and playing on a football field when it was with the Raiders. It was family oriented. Um, we had a natural hierarchy that worked in the locker room that once you earned that space on the top of the hill, it was yours. And you had all the underlings or other understudies under you, if you would. But, you know, I, I respected that and I appreciated that. So That's when you came right. to the Raiders, who was at the top of that hierarchy uh, that you looked up to when you first got there? Steve Wisniewski and Kevin Gogan. Mm, wow. And you know, those, those guys. Are, those are the big guys. Those are the big um, guys. And Gogs was, Gogs was uh, you know, went to Washington, but he had went to Washington Mountain Mater a few years before I did. So I didn't have a chance to meet him until now. But we we really quickly became very close friends because we were playing. He was playing guard, right guard. I was playing right tackle. So, mm. you know, we used to move people off of those double teams uh, off the line of scrimmage <laughs> and, and try to put them in the, into the stand. So it was some good times back then. But Steve Wisniewski is still to this day. Both Kevin Gogan and Steve Wisniewski are really good friends of mine. Um, they, those were the guys who were at the pecking order when I first came to the Raiders. Wow. That's nice. And I remember Wiz used to be early in his career. People thought he was dirty because he played to the whistle. And um, I've had an opportunity to sit down with him. What a nice guy. Yeah. What, yeah. Oh, and the yeah. respect he had toward the end of his career was Absolutely. just incredible. Should, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I, yeah. he, the man should be in the Hall of Fame. He's yeah. been overlooked by so many people, but he should be in the Hall of Fame. He was, he was that good of a player. Can, can we Can we back up just a little bit, talk about, so how far do you want to go back? You already went back to the first time we met. How far do you want to go back? Well, I, I have questions. I have I questions. Understand. I what, understand. Okay, let's go way back. Okay, why'd you send me to the West Club? How, what's that? I said, why'd you send me to the West Club? No, I'm just playing with you. I'm playing with you, Mitch. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Say, I had to throw it in there. He's always sending me to the West Side. Like, like Max Crosby has two X's in his name for the size right. he was at birth. How big right. were you as a baby? Do you know? Yes, I do. You probably won't believe this because most people don't when I tell the story. According to my mother, because I was too young to pay attention and understand, <laughs> I was seven pounds and 24 inches long. Wow. So Just I, was an long, I was a long, you know, submarine sandwich. I was a big, that was a, that was a big sandwich. That's what Did I came out with. Miracle okay. Grow or something? What happened? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm tapping it up to good baby food in the 70s, whatever hormones they put in there then. And uh, and goat's milk because I was allergic to regular milk. So I had to drink goat's milk. So uh, every now and then I'll say good, bad, you know, the type of thing. So uh, I got to keep that clear. You know, so, I have to go to the big and tall store, but I'm a petite, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you get that LT and everything. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, man, that's awesome. So, so Link, going into Washington, do you play both offense and defense? Not in college. No, no, no I mean, no, coming no, out no. of high school. I mean, coming out of high school. school. Yes, I did play both offense and defense. My, you know, when I was young, Mitch, my, well, I didn't get into football until late. I didn't mm-hmm. start playing football until I was a sophomore in high school. Wow. Okay, organized football. Two reasons for that. One, my mom and dad had divorced. My dad was a military man, and my mom and mo- we had moved around quite a bit. So I was never in the same school for more than one year until mm-hmm. I got to high school. And then I had to beg my mom, please, let's stay in this neighborhood so I can go to one school because I, I didn't have many friends. But my mom had got me involved in music and at the third in the third grade. Um, she gave me a trumpet. She said, you're going to do something with your time here, learn music. So I was a band geek. And <laughs> that it, what happened was in high school um, during a game, I was out performing with the, ha- the marching band <laughs> at a halftime show. And my high school coach saw me on the field, came over after the performance and said, what grade are you in? He said, I, I said, I'm in ninth grade. He's like, you're coming out for football next year. And I said, okay. So that, that was the start of, uh, of, of that. But, you know, f- when I, when I started paying attention to football, 
there was one guy that always stood out to me. And every time I heard him, maybe because it was a really popular team, and that was Ed Too Tall Jones of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And the main reason why it stood out to me is because I heard the word too tall. Well, I was always the tallest in my class. Mm-hmm. And and everybody would reflect, oh man, you're big. You're, you know, you're tall. I didn't have as much girth as I had uh, actually when I came out of college and played in the league, but I was tall. I was tall and slender. So I I, I took on, you know, I took on the affinity, affinity of too tall Jones. And that's why I wore number 72 and, and uh, even in the pros. And that's who made me uh, wear that number. Wow. Okay. What about what about the chalkboard? I mean, I used to always do that on the yeah. Silver and Black show, and I l- I looked forward to it. And I'm like, he's the smartest one in the room. I mean, have you ever thought about coaching or any of those kind of things? Or I have never thought about coaching. I have no desire to coach, no patience to coach. Don't want to do it. <laughs> and matter of fact, you know what's what's interesting, Charlie, is that um, when when someone had asked me towards the end of my career, what was I going to do if I would go into coaching? I wasn't as opposed to it as I am now. I had always said, look, if I'm going to coach, it's going to be somewhere high school or lower because I just felt at that time and I still feel to this to this day. Well, it's changed a little bit with the way things are going in this world. But, you know, I just figured that kids at a high school level or lower would better absorb the teaching and then and the, and the tutelage that, you know, guys like me and, and that I could provide and teachers like me could provide. You know, I've always said that if if I was a coach in the league. And I had a player come up to me like, oh, yeah, coach, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a stapler at the back of his head. And, and like, you don't you don't have nothing. You don't know nothing. You're not about nothing. You're never going to be nothing. So I, you know, I, right. I tried to stay away from that. And, and, and very similar things with, with college, the college atmosphere. Look, I never want to live with my bags packed. And I just right, felt if right. you were a college coach, especially – you were never in one place for too long, mm. you know, whether somebody was going to take you at another school or, you know, or you weren't going to have a job. So I never wanted to be like that. So I never wanted a lifestyle like that. That's why I never got into coaching. Mm. Well, like in the pros, well, did, though, like, who was your, who was your coach that stands out the most to you or one that really made the difference in your pro career? Well, yeah, I have to go back to Keith Gilberson, my, my online coach and offensive coordinator in Washington. And I'll tell you a real quick story, how, how he got me. One day we were in meetings and I was always a, a guy who over-explained, over-analyzed everything. That's why Chalk Talk was even created for all that <laughs> crap. Anyways, um, we're sitting in a meeting room, and we're, we're going through practice film. And Coach Gilberson asked me, hey, Lincoln, why would you you know block this guy this way? And I went into this long, drawn-out explanation of why I did it. Coach Gilberson turned on the light, stopped the film, looked at me, and he says, Lincoln, I don't give a shit how you block him. Just block the son of a bitch. <laughs> I swear, guys, the clouds parted. The angels began to sing. And it was like, oh, I get it. Because up until that point, I was, I was, I was, I was thinking that there's only one way to kick slide. There's only one way to pass block. There's only one way to run block. You know, I was thinking that you have to do a way the coach is teaching. Never what is the most efficient way that your body could get it done. When I learned that, my whole game changed. Oh, yeah. Because there were certain things that I couldn't do traditionally, like most offensive linemen, but I was still effective the way I did the things. And so that that's when the light bulb came on for me. And Keith Gilberson was very influential, and he he got me there. He got me to that point. Other in, uh, influencers had to be Joe Bugle. May he rest in peace as well. Great yeah. offensive line coach. Bill Callahan was a really good offensive line coach at the time that we had him before he got touched in the head and went a little crazy, but it was, it was because we drove him to that being with the Raiders. So, but, but no, he went to the state Callahan, still a good friend of mine. So I've had a few guys throughout my time. Right. Well, speaking of that blocking, I was at training camp and we had the sponsors on the sideline and there was a, a, a pass blocking drill that you were part of. And I have never in my life heard a sound like I heard on that day when they had a rookie try to get around you to the quarterback <laughs> and you took this huge step and you was like, you were waiting for like three to five seconds for him to get out of the stance. And when he got there, you <laughs> took your head. It, it hit his helmet. <laughs> and I mean, the sound was so loud and he's rolling around on the ground. Yeah. They're like, run it again. <laughs> <laughs> and they ran it again. Same thing. Big step. Bow. And 
I think he got cut that that afternoon because <laughs> I hope not. The, <laughs> Lincoln, I don't see you job. <laughs> I, and, and that was only training camp. I wonder yeah. what your helmet looked like at the end of the year. I mean, oh, you, I've that, got one I have to show you, Mitch. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty dinged up. It, it, it went through went through some stuff. Oh, I actually had, I had a, a referee one time tell me in a game because I can't remember who we were playing, but. This guy was irritating the hell out of me, and I can't I can't remember what player it was. Anyways, he came into me and he was talking crap. And so when I got a hold of him, so the, you know the key to locking up an offensive lineman, locking up inside the pads, I got a hold of him. I just ran my head repeatedly <laughs> into his helmet, the front of his helmet. He got back, he was like this, and he was kind of stumbling around and you know trying to get get. And the ref came up and says. Lincoln, you can't use your helmet as a weapon. I said, the hell I can. It's on my head. Watch it. <laughs> so yeah, there were instances like that where you had to use what you had to get oh, what you wanted. Oh, man. Well, what's your, what's your miss, most memorable play on the field? And it, it could be because it's like a hero of yours or, I don't know, something that just stands out. I don't know if I really have one. I mean, I, I took pride in playing because I wanted to do the best job. I never wanted to let my teammates down. Another thing that Coach Gilbertson taught me in college is level of accountability. You got to be accountable to your other teammates on the football field. And I never wanted to let anybody down. Mm -hmm. So I took it personal when I was out there in the football field. Look, the quarterback was my girlfriend. Um, uh, the running back was my wife. Um, you know, everyone, everything. There was my mother out there. You're not touching my mother, my wife, and my girlfriend. You're not touching anything. You know what I mean? So I had instances like that going through my mind. And I just wanted to play at a, at a high enough level as long as I possibly could and possibly be effective because I didn't want to let anybody down. And, and when it came time for me to hang up my cleats, when I, you know, I had my last injury in, in my, in my final year, when I tore my tricep and I just realized that the game had changed, I didn't necessarily like a lot of the players that were showing up around me these days. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's time to go. It, it's just a game and it's time to walk away. Well, who, Gannon was your most girlfriend, I guess. And that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, yeah, he was there. He was one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I was going to ask about Gannon and uh, when he completed 21 consecutive passes <laughs> and you know, you guys protected your girlfriend that day I mean, yeah. big time. And that, that was that sort of display. I don't know that the Raiders, we may have seen a little bit out of car in 2017 right. like that, but that was the last real quarterback to really do those things for the Raiders, which would yeah. lead me into, you know, we were, we were the number 23 ranked offense in, in terms of scoring this past year mm -hmm. defense elevated under under the new regime under pierce so do we go after a quarterback in the first round or, or do uh -huh. we go for an offensive lineman i mean I, it doesn't matter who it is i mean right. michael Penix. i mean you might right. want to go for him because he's washington right. but um what what are your thoughts on that well, now you're making me put on my analyst hat, right? So <laughs> yeah, here's yeah. the thing about this year's draft. Um, well, actually, in any draft. You know you know what, what's crazy, you know, Charlie and Mitch, is the fact that every fan base thinks that their draft is going to get them to the Super Bowl. doesn't matter yeah. what happened the year before. <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't matter what happened two years ago. It doesn't matter who's a reigning champ. Every fan base thinks, if we have this great draft, we're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Look, a lot of things have changed with the NFL, and especially the way they're 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 taking care of their players. And most notably of that is they're trying to get the most efficiency out of their players in the early part of their contracts. We don't have to pay them, you know, a God stipend. So with that yeah. being said, I said, and I've, I still hold true to this, I don't think the Raiders' biggest problem is quarterback. I don't mind Aiden O'Connell. I think if you surround him in the right situation, right offense, I think that he can play. But I do know this. Ever since I joined the organization from a broadcasting standpoint back in 2014, we have not had a right tackle over there who can hold his own. Right. And the right tackle position has been given up, hitting hits and stuff like that severely. You know, you've got Colton Miller, who's going to be a lifelong left tackle. Okay. He's, 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 he's cemented that position. You've had other positions out of the offensive line that you've had consistency at, but the right side has been a big hole. Now, I'm not saying the Raiders need to use a 13th pick for him, but they need to address it and they need to right. finally address it, get it right. A few years ago, I was on Alex Leatherwood's hat because I thought that he was going to be good. I had no idea that he had his mental deficiencies like he did. Didn't know until you, you watched him and then you peered into him. It was like, oh, 
okay, this this guy's not all all there. So I hope well, obviously he's he's better and he finds a, a way to have peace in his heart after uh, he's all said and done. If he's still playing, if not, then so be it. But my thing is this: is that they have tried to address the position, but have never gotten it right. They need to address right. that right side of that offensive line. That's the biggest hole, I think, in this offense. And look, you guys know this because you watch enough football. You don't have protection up front. You don't have anything. Right. It's over. It's over. You, yeah. you, you can't, you know, it doesn't matter who you have at quarterback. You can't, you cannot keep these things going. So I don't mind Aiden O'Connell. I don't mind the, uh, I don't mind the, the competition, the open competition between him and Gardner Mishu. If they go out and get another quarterback, that's so be it. This is a very deep quarterback class coming out of college football this year. So, I mean, I can see you making a play with somebody else, but to me, the biggest hole on this team is not a quarterback. Mm. <clears throat> Well, okay. you, you know, one of the things we were talking about, Mitch and I have said, we hate this time of year because we're just guessing. We're all guessing. We're we're making fake drafts and all this. And I'm like, and nobody knows <laughs> that, you know, it's just like, we just want the real season to start. We want the, the things to start clicking. But football's year round now, you know, and and that's amazing, why we have a show. It? That's why we have a show year <laughs> round. And there, but it's there's amazing. so much to it. Yeah, it really yeah, is. I mean, it, it, the game had changed so much. I came into the league in 1993, and I came in with the impression that, you know, there was going to be six months on one and six months off. <laughs> That's what I thought. And we yeah. used to use training camp back in the day to get in shape. We used to get fat in the off season. We used training camp to get back in shape. That's where you're six months on. But after it was over, the last game, if you had the luxury of going to playoffs, you could continue. But if you're not, I'm thinking about vacation in Jamaica. I'm thinking about sitting <laughs> on the beach, you know, sipping some fruity drinks and watching some uh, some bikinis walk by. So, you know, that's what I was thinking about. But the game has evolved to right. year round, 24-7. And, look, it's part of the NFL's doing. They wanted this. They wanted this. Look, they control their overhead because they really only have to play one player on each team. That's a quarterback. That's where the most money is going out to. So they've controlled their overhead over the years, but they have milked everything out of it. And right. I remember when I had my radio show with, with uh, Anthony Gargano on Fox Sports, how he used to get hyped about the combine. And I'm like, the combine? What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? You got a bunch of guys that look like Tarzan, probably going to play like Jay running around, but yet you want to watch this? So, oh. you know, to each his own. I'm not I'm not spitting on anybody, but I will say this, that this game is, has evolved and rolled around to year round. They key NFL fans stay involved right throughout yeah. this whole process. You know, you've got the draft in 12 days or whatever it is. Then after that, you've got the release of the schedule. Then you've got everybody making their plans of where they're going to go. Who's going to be in Frankfurt? Who's going to be in London? Who's going to be, we already know who's going to be in Brazil. But I mean, those things like that, those instances, you know, when are the Raiders playing at the Chiefs? When are the Raiders playing at the Broncos? That used to be the only thing I used to look for in the schedule, guys. I right. wanted to know where we were playing the Chiefs, when we were playing the Chiefs. <laughs> And in Kansas City, and when we were playing Denver, because it's possibly the two coldest games of our season, you know oh, what I mean, yeah. and, uh, upon anyone else. Now these days, you know the opponents ahead of time. You know where you're going to be home. You don't know when it's going to be. You know when it's going to be away. And you look, Allegiant Stadium is a beautiful stadium. Uh, Vegas has been good to us that way. It could be better if the Raiders start winning more games at home. But for the big part is, I don't want to be in Buffalo in December or January, guys, I don't want to be. I don't want to be in Kansas City like I did most of my career. You know, New Year's Eve where around Christmas night. It's cold as hell then. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't want to be roaming around those places at that time. Well, and the rules keep changing now. There's like the new kickoff rule. I hear it's going to be. Some people are thinking there's be a lot more runbacks because they're going to put big old linemen right there. You got ten feet apart, and I mean, who knows? I don't. I don't know right. how that's going to play out, but. They're encouraging the run back. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was one of those big proponents that, you know, look, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. I, I know what they're trying to do for safety standards. I mean, they outlawed the wedge block and they took away drop, black, drop blocking on kickoff. So, I mean, I get the, their point. It's just there. there is a time in, in my mind, guys, where the, the, the game can become a little too gimmicky. Where <laughs> you've got people looking over their shoulders. Is that reviewable? Is that passive appearance? What is the catch? We've gotten so far away from the basics that if yeah. you ask, you poll 10 guys, tell me what a catch in the NFL is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get a consistent story 10, nine out of 10 times. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, it's gotten a little too gimmicky. It's still a fun game to watch, and I still love it. Um, and it, it can be interesting at times, especially dealing with that Raiders, Raiders group. But, you know, yeah. one thing is, is that, you know, I, I still enjoy being around it. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned the road. And, and not wanting to go to cold weather cities. 
I, from your perspective, um, not 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 weather wise, but from your perspective on the road, are the Raiders fans traveling more on the road now because of? Uh, let me. I guess the Oakland fans coming from Oakland and maybe LA are they showing up to more away games? Have you noticed uh, uptick? Well, Mitch, in- I, I think of them all as Raider Nation. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if they're from Oakland, Los Angeles, and you know, Las Vegas. I, I, that, that doesn't bother. Well, I, no, it's well, all I, I, I asked that I way because I, yeah. I, I know some right. people that I know that I will don't, never go to Vegas. I'll go right. visit and them I on the road. It. So, I get it. I get it. Do you see an uptick of uh, Raider fans on the road? No, it's, know, it's you know it's always well. been yeah, it's always been a, a very solid outing, and you go places and yeah. And look, I feel bad for a lot of the Raider Nation that makes these trips to Tampa and New Orleans and Jacksonville because these are not cheap tri- trips. No. And if you go out and you play like crap, I mean, I feel bad for my I'm, I'm <laughs> calling the game, and I feel bad for the people sitting in the stands. But the Raider Nation has always been well traveled. It will continue to be well traveled, and I think it's probably. It won't happen this year, in my opinion. We'll have to wait till next year. But back when we go back across the seas, whether it's to, to Brazil now that they're opening up that spot, or London or, or Germany, you will have your, your fair share of Raider fans that will be there. I, I do know that for sure. You know, Mitch is an Oakland guy. You know, yeah. so I'm Fresno, so I'm like I'm okay with it, man. I I played a high school at Tom Flores Stadium, and right. and and uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Close high. Number three, the Mad Bomber, Daryl LaMonica. Oh, Daryl LaMonica. Uh, Lamar, I can't believe it. LaMonica, they're all from here. And, and from, of course, we have Devontae Adams and Derek yeah. Carr, all from sure. Fresno. So yes. we have some ties there. Oh, but I'm, it, I'm, I'm a Raider. I'm a Raider fan through and right, through. Right, right. And in high school, I would go to games in L.A. And then right. when they came back, of course, everything in Oakland. And I've been to Las Vegas, but I've been to, as Lincoln said, those games on the road. Boy, they are expensive. Yeah. And uh, – yeah. You get there and you're hoping for the best, and sometimes you don't get the best. And no, wow. no, and that's 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 a sore news. Look, I, I I had mixed feelings when the Raiders were moving from Oakland to Las Vegas because I had an affinity for Oakland. Mm-hmm. I love the passion. I love the people. But at the same point, you know, I remember joining the Raiders back in 1996. Al Davis was talking about we're going to get a new stadium. Absolutely, in 1996. 25 years later, nothing. Still nothing happened. Yeah. And then in that time, the Atlanta Falcons, my old club, got two stadiums. <laughs> and, <laughs> the baseball, and, and the baseball. And the baseball. And the baseball. So I'm like, so the, the fact that we right. were one of the most iconic teams in professional sports, but we were sharing our field with the baseball team. Yeah. was a disgrace. Yeah. Yeah, was a disgrace. Look, Jerry's world. You know, he had he had uh, Dallas Cowboy fans buy to put the bricks in, pay money to put b- the bricks in, and they built that stadium. You see what I'm saying? All these new stadiums were coming up, and all the time the NFL was holding over the head of possible. Look, we don't have a team in L.A. You don't give this team your stadium. You're going right. to L.A. Well, the Raiders already did that. Been there, did that, came back, and, and right. were trying to establish something in Oakland. And I would have loved if they mm. were able to stay there. I would yeah. have loved if they were able to make it happen, but it was very disgraceful the fact that they had to share a, t- a stadium with a baseball team. Yeah. yeah. Who may be coming to Las Vegas. And all, everyone's coming to Las Vegas. Look, I will say this. For for what it's worth, the New Horizon has become Las Vegas. Yeah. It, right. the, the money, the glamour, the glitz, the entertainment. And let's face it, Las Vegas is a city, regardless of how you feel about gambling or anything else, Las Vegas is a city that can handle large crowds. Yep entertain large crowds. People didn't want to go to Oakland because it, it was in Oakland. Scared right. of people going to go Oakland. Hey, look, it gets a bad shape. I, I never had a problem going on East 14 to get a haircut, but I know guys in my locker room that did. You see what I'm saying? You yeah, know, I was never like that because I grew up around that. I was comfortable around it, but there, were, there weren't a whole lot of people that wanted to come to see a, a game in Oakland. And look, rightfully so. There's something about a home field advantage. I've always said on, on my mediums that I had when I was when I was, especially was on radio, people wanted to talk about bad about Oakland. Well, I'm a Bronco fan. I, I don't feel something comfortable. Look here, if you're a Bronco fan, <laughs> make sure your tickets are behind the Bronco bench. Yeah, your dumbass wants to win a wear a John Elway jersey and sit in a black hole. That's your own damn fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted the black hole with a Raider outfit on with a microphone. And I got scared. But I mean, the thing is, is that don't you don't walk into a lion's den with a meat belt and right, think that nobody's right. going to touch you. Right. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, it's like also the sad part is in Oakland, our tickets are so expensive. The the casinos own a lot of the tickets. That means right. a lot of the fans are guests. And it's like we're losing our home field advantage in, yeah, in a well, way. They, they look, there, there is no home field advantage because they're ready to start winning. And I'm yeah, just going to call until they start winning in Legion. There's no home field. Right now, especially post COVID, you know, Allegiant Stadium has become the, the next wonder of the world because people like new stuff. Yeah. Regardless if your team is playing. And you know what? Mark Redain, I give him credit because he's the one who told me this. He's no longer with the Raiders. But he told me this in a move. He said, if you think about Vegas, you think about when you go to Vegas, what better way to cap off a, a weekend to go oh, see yeah. a football game? Yeah. You yeah. didn't have that luxury before. You yeah. know what I mean? You had to go to the sports book. Said, but now you can go to a beautiful stadium. A beautiful. Oh, beautiful yeah. stadium with oh, air yeah. conditioning inside. It's it's right overlooks the strip. I mean, you've got everything that you want. And what I appreciate most about this, guys, with the Legion, it's the Raiders. Yeah. That's what I appreciate Nobody else. Most. Nobody no else. else. When they were in Los Angeles, had to share with SC. Had to share those time with SC. Rightfully so. When we were in Oakland, had to share with the A's. I understand. But this is the Raiders. And this mm. is finally a stadium that gives tribute to the Silver and Black and the great Raiders team and organization and its history. And it never happened before. And right. all of their travels, it never happened before. But they finally found a home, and I'm happy for them. Yeah. Did you, did Antonio Pierce? Do you know him pretty well now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? He he was before you. Oh, he was after me. Yeah, he was after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. after you. Okay, yeah. so but knew him knew him from you know just it's football players. It's like a big fraternity. We right. see each other. We'll be able to chop it up. And Antonio Pierce, when he was down here in Phoenix, where I live now, um, I was doing some Pac-12 games. It was cross paths with him when he when uh, Herman was a coach. So um, yeah, I saw him quite a bit and stuff like that. So I, I know Antonio. Yeah, that's, we're, we're, man, we're so excited. And so <laughs> th this year, we don't know what direction we're going to go, but we have a you team. Know. That's and, why but, you got to play. But we do feel like, you know, I mean, we haven't brought up our stepdad at all, but uh, the old coach that we don't like to talk about anymore, <laughs> we felt like we started which the one? year. Uh, the one that's, <laughs> the, yeah, exactly. Uh, which, Patriot which guy. There's, but, there's all, a few all, 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 all 20 of them. Okay, I was about to say, yeah, which one? Which one? No, but, but, but Lincoln, the first eight weeks of this season, we were just like, we're trying to be up for our Raider show yeah. and we're just mad. We're like, he's like a stepdad. Just abuse us. We hate him. And then ding dong, the witch is dead. And, and we here it's the middle of the season and it just felt like there was a different momentum. It was a Ugh. different feeling and it still feels like we're going in a direction that we're happy to be. We want to smoke a cigar. Yeah. That, well, that, well, I, like I will tell you this. Yeah. This, this is the direction in which you've seen the team finish the season. I had never seen before. Because every year that I was affiliated with the Raiders, it had been about offense, 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 offensive minded coach, offense, offense. Even even my glory years, we didn't have a lights out defense. We had a defense that played well enough, but we had an offense that could score. Mm. And so, look, one thing I do tip my hat off to Mark Davis for one of the first things he said after his father passed, he's like, I'm not my dad. I don't know football like my dad. I'm going to have to bring in people to help me. I applaud him for that. Yeah. Yes. That's very mature of a man to say, okay? You 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 address your weaknesses, not to a point where it's holding you back, but you're saying making it being known. And so it was a trial and error over many years. We've had bright spots, you know, Del Rio provided some bright spots, but there was such a long time in the dark trying to come out. You know, mm -hmm. when Gruden came back, Mark was excited. He was excited about Gruden. And rightfully so. I mean, Gruden, we had some great years under Gruden. Yeah. Gruden's simple system was incredibly simple. So simple, I was able to go to a couple of Pro Bowls over it. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. how that, that could be effective. Didn't have to think much. All the thing was taken out of it. So, you know, trying to find that group. And Gruden had a similar mindset coming into where, like, I'm going to try to keep pace with the Kansas City Chiefs. Because if there's a nemesis in our side, a thorn in our side that we can't get rid of, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. And it has been for quite some time. So I applaud, you know, I applauded Gruden for trying to maintain it. He got fired on some BS. We all know right. it. it. It is what it is. But now moving on, you're still trying to catch that genie, that lightning in a bottle. And part of them said, you know what, we want to go with Josh McDaniels because we're going to try to have that New England mad attitude, you know, but it. What we've seen from most of that coaching tree, there hasn't been a lot of success that came out of coaches from that coaching tree. Right. And so lesson learned. But you know what? Mark has been, Mark Davis has been trying to get 
the things right because I know he wants to win. I know he wants to make, you know, Allegiant Stadium the Death Star where other teams come to die. I know that. I know that for a fact. And I want it too. Trust me, there, there's only a few teams that I hate more than the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, but, you know, they're definitely at the top of my pecking order. So I tell Mark every season, dude, I will give you a series. I'll give you two yeah. series. Just let me line up against those guys and win. Let me just <laughs> knock a couple, a couple of heads. Just give me a chance. So it hasn't happened yet, but, I, but I'm still holding. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, so what, what news do you have for the Raider Nation out there? Is there is there something that we need to be looking forward to? Do you feel good about this? Where Where's your head with us? The, well, the I mean, is? look, you, you look at the energy that Antonio Pierce brought with the defense, you've got star power. Now you just need to have to find a way to rein it in and, and pull it together. The big thing is, is that the Raiders have got to find a way to answer their nemesis. They have got to find a way to handle the Kansas City Chiefs. Everything else to me is fodder. The Kansas City Chiefs keep winning championships. They keep playing well. They keep seem to be excelling. The Raiders have got to find a way to handle that. And, and now that we're taking a little bit of a new, different direction, well, we saw in a Christmas game. I mean, we, with the Christmas Day game uh, against the Chiefs in Kansas City, that was a great game. I mean, Jack Jones had an interception. How about that? I mean, the, you, yeah. we haven't seen a lot of plays like that from the defensive side. So the Raider Nation has every reason to be excited about everything about this team. You know, you've got Devontae Adams. You've got offensive firepower. Might have lost a little bit with Josh Jacobs, but I knew that was a move that they were going to make because it was going to be too costly. We'll see what other, you know, we'll see what other moves they try to make. If they might, if they're active in free in uh, free agency anymore, or if they just wait to the draft, I think the roster is pretty much put together. But you never know how good you guys are going to be until you play against somebody. I said that yeah. all along. So whether I'm looking at paper, looking at looking down rosters, oh yeah, I know that name, but it doesn't mean they're going to play well. Doesn't right. mean they're going to play worth, worth a damn together. You have to take solace in what you have. You've got playmakers on all sides. Now you have to have the intangibles that come together. That's why they need to address the offensive line, in my opinion, guys. Oh, I love it. Love it. Yeah, because we certainly addressed that defensive line with Christian Wilkins. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, certainly yeah. did. Yeah, certainly that's, did. Like, that's like getting a first-round draft yeah. pick before well, you the draft. thought about running for politics just because of your name? I mean, <laughs> I, I, who's not going to vote for Lincoln and Kennedy? <laughs> no, Charlie, because of my name, I'm not running for politics. I have two assassinated presidents. <laughs> oh, that's right. Somebody's <laughs> going to shoot at me just for the hell of it. What are you trying to do? Oh, you know, I mean, you, you, you're trying to end this session pretty quickly. I don't know oh, oh, my oh. goodness. Hey, my, my last name is Fitzgerald. I could put that in there, too. Too, no, so let's see. No, they, they can't do that. No, no. I didn't even think of that. Oh, that's <laughs> that's why you got such quick feet because you had to. Oh, well, you had to. Absolutely right. Right about that. But no, never, oh, never had any desire to be in politics. Goodness. <laughs> oh wow, this has been great, man. I'm so excited. Mitch, is there anything else you want to add, real quick? Thank you, Lincoln. Bless you, really, my really, really, really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Wish Hall you both of fame, the best. Hall of Fame in college and maybe the pros coming. I hope so. Yeah, Lincoln Kennedy, the biggest man we've ever met. And on the show, <laughs> biggest guy, biggest guy and name we've had on the show in a while. So thank well, you Mitch, so much. Don't, Mitch, just don't send me to the West Side Club anymore, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. All, all, all East Side, baby. All on, East Side. Mitch. We'll I, I can't wait. Week. When I come when I come to Vegas though, well, you and I have to get together. Oh, we, right we definitely get a stick. Yeah. Definitely get yeah. a stick. He's yeah. gonna put yeah. you in the wrong club though. I know it. So that's a, <laughs> you, you deserve that. Have, have you guys seen Lincoln? Oh, he's on the other side. Oh, laughing, man. laughing. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be at my restaurant. You guys got to stop throwing the anchor crab shack in. in, hey, in wait, Vegas wait, wait. What's, what's, your, what's your restaurant? Yeah, what plug is it? it, please. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I've got, I've got two restaurants. I've got one here in Phoenix called the Angry Crab Shack. It's up in uh, Happy Valley, which is uh, North Phoenix. And uh, in, in Vegas, in Henderson, the suburb of Henderson, not right down the street from the facility, I've got another one, Angry Crab Shack. It's my Ooh, restaurant. Ooh, the Angry oh, Crab nice. Shack. Mm -hmm. All right. You don't want don't Lincoln know. when he's angry, Seafood. but you want his crabs. In a time. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the, the angry crab, the, the shack, the shack. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, we'll see you next week for Inside the Patch. I'm not only Charlie Mitch Adams, a professor of the perfect rotation, and of course, Mr. Lincoln Kennedy. And do you still have that if you put Raiders down in the promo code? If you, you get put a deal? promo code down, Raiders. Get 30% off. There it is. Rotation. Raiders. 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 We'll see you next week Raiders. for Inside Th the Patch. Thank, Thank you, Lincoln. Lincoln. We'll be back with more Inside the Patch on 1430 ESPN, your official home of the Las Vegas Raiders.